join the team. Hey team, it's McGuire Review, and I wanted to do a quick Gen Con 2022 video. We'll keep it kind of short here. One of the things that I wanted to do a little differently this year, and it's because a lot of people do these board game hauls. I didn't really want to do that, so I'm not going to show all the board games that I got while I was at Gen Con or all the different little exclusive bits at the you know at the different vendors and whatnot. I will show a few things. There is one little exclusive I do want to point out because we're going to have a video coming up on it very soon, and I'm really, really excited about this particular game. So, just a few things I want to shout out. If you've never been to Gen Con before, there is a number of different exclusive items that you can get at the convention. And that's what I really want to focus on here before I kick it over to the hall and a couple different events, a couple different things that you can see in the video that I recorded. But one of the things that's really cool are these exclusives that you can get if you go to the convention. Now, reason why I'm not going to show all the board games that I came home with, some new, some old, is because you pretty much can see those board games pretty much anywhere, but you got to be at the convention to get a lot of these different types of exclusive items. And if you've never been to Gen Con or a convention like this, this is the types of things you'll be able to get your hands on if you go to the actual conventions. So uh, there is a place called Hot Box Pizza. It's a staple there at Gen Con in uh, the area where they have the block party and where they have all the food trucks. They did a special cup this year, which is pretty awesome. It's got a little dragon on there. It says Gen Con Hot Box Pizza. So that was cool. Every year, Sun King Beer does their very own uh, Gen Con exclusive beer that people will vote on for this year. This was one of the beers from the past. There was a few of them put out there. People voted, and it was the Dragon's Delight Belgium-style golden ale that one and it does have an exclusive gen con can uh, this beer is gone i did drink it uh, but i do bring back a can every year just so i have uh, all the cans since they've been doing these special gen con cans this is a new thing here um, they did this a few years ago they've done it again now it's the r dot cup they have a special gen con cup and it's made of a hard plastic material and these things are literally indestructible i've got ones that are from years and years ago that are still well the first year they did it uh, that are still like brand new so these things are awesome they had a small one this year with the little different colored dice in the gen con logo and then they had the big one here for gen con 55 and that's what this was it was the 55th anniversary year for gen con it's got all the hashtags around the bottom it's got some really awesome artwork there of an RPG hero, we'll say. Uh, and these did come with uh, little straws and lids this year. So that's nice. You do get an exclusive Gen Con coupon book when you pick up uh, your badge. If you do pick up your badge there, it will call. They'll have a little area to get one of these exclusive books. And in the book, and a number of conventions do this, because uh, again, this video is to kind of give you a feel for what you can kind of get when you're on site at the conventions. There's various different coupons. And you can go to different booths and rip the page out and give them the coupon, and it might give you some money off. It might even give you something totally free, some type of like promo. Okay. There was also uh, the company that does the official merch for Gen Con uh, is called Rollacrit. All right. That's the new company for official Gen Con merch. And if you did buy uh, a number of things, which I did because uh, we wanted to get a few t-shirts that were con, that were at the con, one of which, this one right here, was released uh, very shortly before the convention actually started, and I'll show you that one. That one's pretty awesome. Uh, and we got a bucket hat as well. I don't know where the bucket hat is. I don't have that. But if you did spend a certain amount, you got this exclusive Gen Con pin. So there's lots of little exclusive things you will generally find them being pins and different things like that here is the uh, anniversary so this is the shirt that was specifically for gen con 55 anniversary it's kind of got like a, a tie-dye type type look there uh, i thought it was kind of that 19 you know <clears throat> 1960s early 70s kind of design and look so very uh very cool there so I absolutely love that t-shirt that's probably one of my favorites. We'll just kind of set this right here. And then here's the other one that I really liked. Uh, and again, this one's nothing new. You could see that one well before uh, the convention was there. But I did pick that one up as well. We'll have to say this one here really, really was cool. Uh, what else do we have here? <clears throat> okay. 
Disney Sorcerer's Arena. The only reason why I'm showing this board game is because this was a Gen Con exclusive release. This is not going to be available for about another month or so on the market and retail, but they did have it at Gen Con. You can get your hands on it. And the reason why I'm showing this isn't just for that, but it's to show that example that if you're there on site, you will be able to get your hands on games usually a month, and I've even seen up to three months before in the past, before that game comes out and hits retail. You'll be able to get your hands on an expansion or a brand new board game. So that can be really cool. That's a benefit of kind of being on site. You're able to do that. All right. What else? Okay. If you're on site, you get this little exclusive um, Sorcerer's Arena Epic Alliances pin. Uh, it's a nice high quality enamel pin, and you got that with literally just making a purchase. We've got the Dungeon Masters limited edition of out of 500. These usually do sell out, especially the ones that are out of 500. So I thought this one was really cool. It's from uh, Monster here. They do pins, a number of other things, but primarily pins. Uh, and it does just say Dungeon Master with a shield and a dragon on it there. So I thought that was pretty awesome. Crystal Castle or Crystal Cass does an exclusive Gen Con die every year. So this is the Gen Con 2022 die. It was a blue and gray with kind of silvery pips this year. Really, really cool. It's kind of a staple item that you would get. And literally, it's one of the pages out of this coupon book. You rip out, you take it to Crystal Cast, and every year they have one of these exclusive dice. So if you don't know about that, now you do. So don't miss out on that because it is completely free. It's one of the only things outside of where we're going to go here in a minute that you do actually get just straight up free from Gen Con. Incubus! Yes! I went to the live session zero of Incubus when I was there uh, and saw that. It was awesome and got to hang out with the entire uh, cast later on that night, uh, which was a lot of fun as well. So shout out to Incubus and I will be watching this series. I really, really look forward to this. It's going to be awesome. If you've not heard of this or this RPG series, go check it out. Trust me, it's going to be something special. Okay, something else that I thought was amazing this year is Roller Crit did a limited edition Gen Con 55 for the 55th anniversary collector coin. It's a nice big coin. It's about this big. It's in the pack here. I'm not going to open it and show you because I want to keep it in the pack. And they only made a thousand of them, which sold out very, very fast. I got 90 of a thousand and it is wax sealed on the front. So another one of those just special convention kind of exclusive type things. Here is the Gen Con program book every year. They give you a book that you uh, can look through that has a number of different informational things in it. There's ads, there's events, there's where booths are located. There's all kinds of different things you'll be able to find here in the Gen Con book. All right, moving along, uh, R.A. Salvador was there this year as well. He was the special guest author um, that was announced. It was kind of late in the game when that was announced, but he was there. Extremely nice guy. I got two of my books, book one of the main series signed, and book three of a fantastic trilogy here. Uh, this is the, the Two Swords. It's one of the books he's... Uh, most known for as far as awards go. So I got both of these signed by him and personalized, which was a really, really special thing. And it was a ticketed event. It was free. Signature was free. There was no cost there for that. Uh, but it was, a, it was a ticketed event, and there was way more people than had tickets that were in the line. And he did stay every day to sign everybody's books, even if he didn't have a ticket. So... Big thumbs up, just being a great guy and being able to stick around, sign those books for the fans. Okay, Beetle and Grimm's. Beetle and Grimm's, one of my favorites. This is the brand new Spelljammer t-shirt that they did release uh, at Gen Con. They had them on site at Gen Con. They didn't even have them the first day, but by the second day, they had them on the back. Well, I'll show you the front first. I love this shirt, love the design. Look how cool that is. It's got such a cool look to it and design. And then on the back, you've got Dungeons & Dragons, Beetle & Grimm. Okay? 
All squids, no ramming. Wow, so cool. Such a great job there. Uh, and if I remember correctly, Bill had his hand in this design. Uh, and it's amazing. I just really love the look of that t-shirt. Okay, here's something else that's cool. Wild Bill's root beer that you can get uh, while you're there. You can buy one of these cups. I got mine years ago. Uh, if you do keep the cup and return with it, you can use it again year after year. However, you will buy this little tag right here that you put on it, and you'll be able to get unlimited root beer fill-ups of an, an entire assortment of root beers all weekend. It's about $7 per day if you just prepay for the whole uh, weekend so that you know the whole Gen Con will cost $28 you pay that you get that's the pricing right now okay 2022 that's the pricing you get this little tag but again it is unlimited as much of this craft root beer as you can basically handle uh, so I think it's totally worth it and it's absolutely delicious so I do that every year uh, this was a little uh, monster bag and I think this is the first I hope I'm right about this I think this is the first year that Crystal Cass had these so I thought that was a pretty cool little thing. It's got the little eyeball in there, little monster bag. And then the other free item that you do get um, outside of the Crystal Cast die every year is if you go to the Paizo booth every single day, and here are the four. I've got an extra one here. Every single day you will get one of these exclusive buttons um, that you can get. And it's, kind of, it's like the pin button that you can get. And each day is a different one. You basically walk to their booth and they have tubs of these buckets and they will just hand you one for free. And that's something really cool that they've always done there at the convention. Um, and every year they're different. Starfinder, Pathfinder, obviously those two IPs that Paizo does, you'll find on these buttons. It's been really cool. Okay, here was a here was a nice Beetle and Grimm's bag that uh, they were giving out. I make irrational choices. That's awesome. Okay, the only other thing, last thing I'll show before we roll the clip. Hopefully you're still with me. Um, if you haven't uh, stayed with me, you probably skipped ahead if this is something that you kind of know about. But I'm really making this video uh, for the folks that may not um, have been to a convention like Gen Con before, or may not have been to uh, any type of convention like that. There are these really cool exclusive things that you can get your hands on. There's many more. This is just the stuff that 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 I got. Now this is a WizKids a full preview kit of Onslaught so we will be having this on the channel here coming up soon. I'm gonna play through this and then we'll, we'll make some videos of it. It's not coming out for some time yet so um, we're gonna be able to get ahead on uh, taking a look at this and, and seeing what what this has to offer. I'm really excited about Onslaught and on site I can tell you it looks absolutely amazing. The miniatures looked super cool. The gameplay looked really nice. The components were spot on. It just really, really brought me back to those original D&D skirmish days. I loved that game. So this I'm very, very excited about and can't wait to cover it. So with that, and with no further ado, we will now go to some clips and various pictures of Gen Con 2022. Enjoy. That's right. We're in our 
Blake has like just started doing modules, so it started with second edition where he's like working on the job. So I was just curious if it's something else. Oh yeah? What book are you on?
showdown setting is a new type of box that, that, we're, that we're doing, a new type of box set. And what you see here is specifically the showdown setting for the Temple of Light. The idea is that specifically with Spelljammer, the Temple of Light is a very important location and a pivotal encounter in the story. And this gives you everything that you need to run that encounter. So you get the double-sided map tiles, again, you know, one, uh, one inch grid line, astral space on the back. You get the astral font terrain piece, and you get 10 miniatures. Basically, just a complete box, everything you need to run this encounter with Spelljammer. And then she, I did have her see Lady Kiyoshi. Oh, yeah, that's correct, too. The peach one. All out. Like yeah. A really serious big old wig, like I think it was plastic. Oh, wow. And, you know, parasol, beautiful dress. Unbelievable. And I have seen some people in somewhat medieval attire. Right. They have yeah. a whole, like, This is coming in maybe a month. So this is what you're talking about, huh? Yeah. Oh, shit. You can see some of the rules on the back of the box.
there's a lot of smooth trend there. We want to thank you for being here. You know, one of the reasons that I love the Emmy so much is this is our opportunity to celebrate some of the best and most remarkable creative work in the industry. Absolutely. And I think on, on a more personal note, the best setting goes to Calderai Campaign Secretary Gorn, Matthew Mercer, I'm Chelsea. I'm the hobby marketing and an influencer specialist here at the Op USAopoly, and we're going to talk about Disney Sorcerer's Arena today. This is our one of our newest games, at least. Uh, Epic Alliances is our core set, and we have plans for expansions for several years to come. We'll talk about that more in a minute. First, this is based off the mobile game. So if you've played Disney Sorcerer's Arena on mobile, you're gonna love this game. It is still that classic skirmish game. You play as two players or four players. So it's one versus one or two versus two. For the core set, we're introducing these eight characters. What's great about Sorcerer's Arena is that the mobile app has 180 Disney characters. And we have access to all 180. And as they add more characters, we can add more characters. So right now we've got Pixar, we've got Disney Afternoon, uh, Afternoon with Gargoyles, uh, a lot of classic Disney animation as well, and even Sorcerer Mickey for those Fantasia lovers out there. Uh, it's a really fun battle skirmish game. And what's really great is if you are brand new to gaming, there's a chapter learning system. So if you've played Hogwarts Battle, our deck builder, you'll be familiar with this system. And if not, basically it's an introduction course to slowly break you into learning all of the mechanics of this game. So, core set available now. Last week, we dropped our first expansion. Yay! So this one adds Davy Jones, Moana, and Stitch. What's really fun is that Moana adds ocean tiles to your game board. So as you can see, the board has all the hexagons, so you'll be adding these ocean pieces, which are actually going to benefit all your oceanic characters. So not just Moana and not Davy Jones from Pirates, but Ariel is an oceanic character, so everything's going to tie together. This also means moving forward that there could be attributes for, say, like all the Disney princesses. Coming very soon, and this is a bit of a Gen Con exclusive, in a couple of months, our next expansion will come out. You've got the Horn King from Black Cauldron, Mother Gothel from Tangled, and Jack Skellington. What's really fun is the Horn King spawns zombies, basically, that do all of his bidding. And this is the beginning of Disney Sorcerer's Arena. We're going to talk about Mountains Out of Mill Hills. This is a fun gateway board game if you're just getting into, like, bigger gaming. So basically, you play a mole. What's really fun is that this box turns into a two-level game board. That's super fun. So moles, they live underground. You're moving your piece at the bottom of the board, and as you move, you push molehills up on the top, creating your own little mountain, a mountain out of molehills, if you will. So this game features card drafting each round. There's six rounds, and then programming. The programming will allow you to move your pieces, which is a little bit more challenging than you think it is, especially as you add more players. Then to score on each round, whoever's colored piece, their molehill at the bottom, 
the bottom of each one is the controller of that mountain. So you're going to score based, like if you're green, you've got four pieces here, three here, and two there. And that's how many points you would get for this round. At the end of six rounds, the player with the most points overall wins. Are you looking for a demo or any questions I can answer for you? Yeah, I didn't Right, well, I just needed a straight line path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a straight line one that Yeah. So that's why I rolled up this I was How dare you? Two mustaches. <laughs> vegan-friendly uh, uh, PU uh, synthetic leather. I'll turn this around so you can see the inside of it and I can talk to you about a bit more of its functionality. Uh, the Dragon, I'm sorry, the Dungeon Master's Companion uh, fits A4 leather paper. Uh, it can also, it also has spare room so you can certainly fit American leather paper in there and take uh, something off of a computer and home printer directly into your campaign day of if necessary. We've got a little spot here for your dry erase marker so that doesn't get lost wherever it ends up going. There's a spot here for your phone if you want to put uh, put on tavern music, reference D&D &D Beyond, 
or um, do a little sneaky rules check just in case there's a dynamic that you haven't had to deal with in a while and you want to maintain your credibility as a uh, all-knowing dungeon master. Another thing is the uh, the screen bends backwards, so if you need to keep your secret information secret, but it's time to show people where they are on the map. Over here, you can bend this backwards and show people where they are in the labyrinth. Storage over here can fit up to 44 miniatures. This is usually the top bit. I'll show you what comes in the bottom. It's, it's pretty standard uh, miniature, small miniature stuff, so I'm not going to get into that too much. <laughs> this will fit the 18 dry erase sleeves that come with it, or Wizards of the Coast monster reference cards if you're using those to make your life easier. The foam inserts here are mirrored to the slots in here to account for the larger than model bases so that it's not fit in there all, all wonky and sits in nice and, and tight. It, this additional space in here can fit multiple 5th edition source books or even the ridiculously large 2nd edition core rulebook for Pathfinder, 600 pages. There's a little extra space in here so you can get your fingers in there to pull it out. I'll say over the weekend I've had multiple people uh, ask if they could fit their laptop in there just to see if it fits and many and laptops have gotten in here over the weekend. Let me show you what this looks like when it's all together. This is what it looks like when the Game Master is all to, or the Game Master's companion is all together. The Game Master's Companion, actually if I can pull this aside for you so you can see better. Game Master's Companion, the screen is uh, magnetic so it's going to hold in there and you can break down and set up really easily whenever you like. Let's see. The magnets are pretty good so I've not had too much trouble with those this weekend but just in case you don't trust magnets to your precious miniatures, it comes with a strap that goes around it so you don't have to worry about that any chance of that coming out. It also, that strap has a handle on it so you don't have to show up to sessions with everything under an arm.